and gentlemen, Craig Ferguson. Craig Ferguson, please, please. All right. All right. Now, wait a minute. It's starting to sound a little bit phony. It's almost as if you had been coached by uh, some kind of semi professional warm up man. I say semi professional. <laughs> it is a great day for America, everybody. Why? Well, it's Monday. Yes, mo <laughs> it's Monday. Is it Monday? Yeah. It's Monday. Oh, Monday, my favorite day in, in May. Isn't May lovely with the little... The lambs tweety tweet tweet. Yes, lambs tweeting. <laughs> Lamb, lambs bounding around. The sun, the flowers, the... May sweeps and television. doesn't frighten me. If they were going to kick me off the air for low ratings, I'd be off by now. Come on! No, don't worry. You're welcome, viewer. <laughs> hey, it, <laughs> it was a huge weekend at the box office this weekend. Uh, how can you know this, Craig? Because I follow these things. That's why. The big movie over the weekend, the one everybody's talking about, Speed Racer. Speed Racer. <laughs> it's true, it is. It was fantastic. It's not a documentary about Mel Gibson. It's an actual movie. <laughs> It's about race cars. It's got fantastic special effects, uh, state-of-the-art stuff. Do we have a clip of Speed Racer? <laughs> That's not the real Speed Racer. Craig, we thought it was. Well, you were wrong. You were wrong, imaginary people next to me. Play the real Speed Racer clip. Come on. about. I have never been as excited about a movie since uh, the one with the skull with the ghost rider. I love that one. A skull, a skeleton on a, on a motorcycle on fire. The skeleton was on fire on the motorcycle. I mean, come on! And this looks fantastic too. It looks like kind of NASCAR Harry Potter. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Take that. Take that, Hagrid, and all those other things. Oh, Harry, with your a broomstick? Come on! We're in America, buddy! <laughs> anyway, the guys who made this movie uh, are the guys who made The Matrix, which means this one is great, but the sequels will be crap. And... <laughs> oh, no, because the sequels to The Matrix were great. That's right, so Umi, I deserve it. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> we want to obey! <laughs> We've been professionally warmed up. <laughs> Must obey warm-up, man. Under no circumstances express any opinion of your own. Anyway, then this, uh, uh, this uh, movie, this is Speed Racer, so the sequels will be all crap because it's the Matrix things. You know, it'll, just, it'll go downhill. In the next movie, the car will go to a rave and make out with Keanu Reeves and get a sex change or something. <laughs> Anyway, this, the, the Speed Racer was originally a cartoon from Japan in the 1970s. It was popular in Japan, then it became popular in America. It's like sushi. Uh, <laughs> it's like sushi, but less gay. <laughs> That's right, I'm saying sushi is gay. That's right, but I still like it now and then. What can I say? I'm European. I think I just managed to offend everyone in the world. Including me! <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Including me. <laughs> anyway, I'm really into cars. I love the cars. I like the fast cars and stuff. So I, 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 love, I love the car in, spe in Speed Racer. It's got a special uh, grip tires, a bulletproof deflector, and two saws that come out of the bumper to cut through trees and bush. Now, remember, Speed Racer is from the 1970s. There was a lot more thick bush to cut through back then. <laughs> Oh, let me just 
disgusting. <laughs> anyway, global warming has taken all of that away. <laughs> and waxing. <laughs> Especially in Brazil. <laughs> will you knock it off? All right, I will. Uh, anyway, Speed Racer, a live-action movie made out of a cartoon. It's like uh, Scooby-Doo or The Flintstones or uh, anything with William Shatner. And <laughs> there's still a few cartoons that haven't been turned into movies yet. You know the one I want to see? The live-action SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Finally, a movie for us! Yes! <laughs> Finally! <laughs> Don't know who he... <laughs> You know who loves SpongeBob SquarePants? These people. That's who love it. Kids are like, I don't get it. And they're like, shut up. <laughs> it's SpongeBob's own. <laughs> Who would play SpongeBob, though? Donald Trump. <laughs> Who lives in a tower under his rug? Sponge Trump, air piece. I... That's right. Now listen, I haven't, I must be honest with you, I haven't seen the Speed Racer movie yet. I, I haven't had time. Um, <laughs> but I already love it. And I'll tell you why. Because I love movies about car racing. Talladega Nights, that was a great movie. You could practically, it was, wasn't it? You could practically like, taste the sweat, you could smell the burning rubber, and that was just Will Ferrell's bare ass. When the cars came out again, bare. Do you remember that movie, uh, Days of Thunder, with Tom Cruise? That was kind of hard to believe, because he was driving like this. <laughs> like this. I'm going to win this one, Tom! Although, in that movie, Tom drove on both sides of the road. Now, that I believe. Oh, that's right, and he was in The Matrix as well. Shut up! <laughs> I've always been into car racing, NASCAR, stuff like that. A lot of people make fun of the NASCAR. And you know what these people should do? Get the hell out of America and go back to Al-Qaeda, you bastard. <laughs> NASCAR is American! <laughs> we don't agree, but we're frightened of appearing not patriotic. <laughs> we don't want to be picked up by Homeland Security. <laughs> We don't necessarily agree, but we are afraid. <laughs> Here's something you might not know about NASCAR. Inside the cars, the drivers use a little device called a trucker's friend. <laughs> no, because the NASCAR races are about three hours long and the drivers have to keep drinking water to stay hydrated. It's very hot, they, so they, they have to use a trucker's friend to pee in while they're racing. <laughs> Sometimes they just go in their suits. I know, it's disgusting. I think that's why they pour champagne on the winners, you know, to try... <laughs> I have to admit, some nights here at the show, I use a trucker's friend, you know. <laughs> His name's Gunter, he's right over there. Say, uh, say hi, Trump. There he is. Hi, Gunter. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gunter. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back, everybody. We'll be right back. Welcome back, my naughty monkeys. <laughs> oh, I feel such a fool. <laughs> I was going to do this one. <sighs> I had to do that myself. It's still not working. <laughs> to do in this damn show. Turn on the machine. <laughs> <sighs> People sometimes ask, why don't you have a band? That's why. <laughs> anyway, we're very busy tonight. I can't be mucking around getting things more wrong than I normally do. So, uh, let's, uh, do we have time for an email? Yes, try. There's always time for Gotta go now, I gotta make him. 
with Mick Jagger. <laughs> there you go. David Bowie doing email jingles for our show. <laughs> How the mighty fall. <laughs> this is from Sarah in Sandwich in uh, uh, Ma Ma. This is a Chushish. Ma Chushish. Sandwich. That's a lovely name for a town, isn't it? Sandwich. You know that the Sandwich uh, was originally the actual Sandwich was named after the Earl of Sandwich, who uh, was kept looking for something that he would enjoy eating, and he, you know, he invented the Sandwich. <laughs> He did invent the sandwich. He invented, he was like, he tried other things first, you know, the, the, you know, ham on the outside, bread in the middle. He was close, but not close enough. <laughs> anyway, uh, Sarah, Sarah, <laughs> we can cut this out. Uh, oh, no, we can't, because we're live, May 12th. <laughs> well, now you get to see what it's like. Um... Uh, Sarah and Sandwich. Sarah and Sandwich. It doesn't sound like it's real. But it is real, though. We don't make these up. We don't make anything up here. Uh, don't even turn on the damn machine. Uh, anyway, Sarah and Sandwich says, Dear Craig, how come sometimes when you turn the TV off, there's that little circle of colour that stays on? Does that mean your TV is haunted? No, it, it just means your TV is crap. Uh, also, I call me old-fashioned, but when I turn the TV off, I'm done watching it. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't say, like, well, let's turn it off. Now let's see what happens. I mean, it's over. You know, it's off. There you go. I, I, maybe, I've got, maybe I've got low expectations of life or something like that, but when I turn the TV off, I don't expect anything else to happen. Of course, I don't live in sandwich like some laddy da bastards. kind of went off on Sarah a little bit. I think unreasonably so. I'm terribly sorry, Sarah. I, I think I'm a little bit hungry. <laughs> All right, this is from Ethan and Encino. Now, this can't be true. Sarah and Sandwich, Ethan and Encino, look. <laughs> Guess it is. Do you remember that movie Encino Man with Brendan Fraser? Yeah, that was, that's when movies were movies. <laughs> Brendan Fraser seemed to go through a long phase of movies where he would always be a guy that came back from a long time ago or he was somehow buried underground. There was, uh, there was that one, uh, Encino Man, and then there was uh, George of the Jungle where he had been raised by bananas or something, and then there was the one where he, him, he was underneath in a nuclear bunker and then he came back. And then The Mummy! The Mummy, it was someone else come back, but he was still in it. That's why we, we haven't seen a movie of Brendan Fraser's for a while. He's underground right now <laughs> and soon he'll come out and it'll be that'll be the movie plot he'll be a guy from sandwich that invent i don't know anyway ethan and encino says uh, hey craig I, I know you came to america to use your accent to get girls yes so what <laughs> your point said i know you came to america to use your accent to get girls so if i moved to scotland would i get girls and a talk show too <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. But is that what you want? Think it through, Ethan. Think it through. Also, I've got to be honest with you. My accent, completely phony. No, I, I, no it's, it's, it's a real accent. But I have to say, and, and I know this is going to come as a great shock to Ethan and many, many other people, I got laid in Scotland as well. <laughs> still waving it just my hand went to sleep during the commercial break I was sitting on it 
Do you ever wake up and you like you've fallen asleep on a part of your body and you're like, <gasps> I've had something amputated. You just can't feel it. <laughs> it goes completely numb while you're asleep. If you plan it correctly, you can plan out the area of your body you wish to go numb while you sleep. <laughs> Why is everything sexual with you? Why? <laughs> Maybe it's your accent. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a board there. I just press an actual sheep. <laughs> we have a... It, it, it <laughs> we trained a sheep. It just sits right there. I press it and it goes like... Uh, uh, off you go, Barry. <laughs> See? That's right. The sheep's called Barry. <laughs> he lives right there. You can't see him, so don't even try. Unless you've got one of those special televisions that still works after you turn it off. <laughs> All right, we, I, this is, we like to do this every now and again. We like to have a look at the world of sport from the perspective of our friends across the pond in the United Kingdom. It's time for another segment of ESPN UK, everybody. Take a look at this. ESPN UK. I'm Sir Cecil Wellesley Hogg. And I am Dirk Weems, top scorer on the field and in the parking lot at Hooters. Booyah! <laughs> Tonight it's our annual sports trivia bowl. Brought to you by Weems Away, the cleaner that plays dirty. Weems Away, it kicks stains in the nuts. <laughs> our challenger is Buddy Grant of Dallas. I ain't never been on TV before. <laughs> Can I say hi to my kids? No, you can't, you hillbilly. Let's get on with it. Come on. <laughs> so, buddy, what charity are you playing for tonight? Habitat for Humanity. Wonderful. Dirk, your charity? Dirk Weaves. <laughs> oh, I put thousands of young women through college one lap down at a time. There you are. Hey, 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 see what I did. <laughs> First category, Dirk Weems trivia. Oh, great. How many red cards did Dirk get for unsportsmanlike conduct while playing for Manchester United? Twelve. Got you now, Bubba. Wrong. Answer is 11. Uh, June 4th, 1986, Dirk uh, punched a referee in the face, but he was not red carded due to the riot. It earned him the nickname Dirty Dirk. <laughs> Why don't you get alive, you smug little monkey? <laughs> Next, things Dirk did today. Today, Dirk, A, woke up drunk, B, cried in the shower, or C, dried his wig in the microwave. I can't remember, I forgot. I'm guessing all three. You get that wig with the mustache, or do you buy those separately? This is a $300 haircut, you backwards monkey! <laughs> now the final video bonus round. Gentlemen, identify this match. I win, I win, go Weebsy, go Weebsy. My God, Jack. Did you lift my answer card? Oh, good Lord, the pain is absolutely searing. <laughs> my God, I can't see. Yeah, well, oh. that's our sports trivia, Bo. We'll see you next week. Oh. Right. Some of us will. Some of us will. See what I'm saying? And some of us will. They'll be in hospital with medical problems. Welcome back, my filthy pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
There's nothing I like better than faking an orgasm as a pigeon. <laughs> try it. Come on, everybody, try it. Wow, they did it. It's almost like they'd been trained by a professional warm-up man. <laughs> My first guest tonight is a star on uh, ER, Thursday nights on NBC. <laughs> but uh, it's good. It's good. Take a look at this. Please welcome John Stamos, everybody. John Stamos. John. Have you been drinking tonight? You're oh, up. I've been drinking. I'm still drunk from the 80s. How are you? <laughs> good, good, I man. am. I, uh, I yes, am, Greg? I am excited to see you. And I noticed that you, you were blowing kisses to a couple of ladies in the audience and yeah. they were blowing kisses. And then I said, no, they were blowing them at me. And you said, no, they were blowing them at you. Yeah. You can't share anymore? <laughs> no. I mean, you can't even let me dream a little bit? No. Why not? The hair. What's what do happening? you mean? When you don't you start with the hair? Look at you. Look, wait, 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 let me just... Ow, I... I cut myself on that. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> the last time you were here, you were yeah. here with Don Rickles. I know, yeah, right. Why, why are you always hanging with Rickles? Are you, like, gay for Rickles or something? <laughs> it's a fair question. No, yeah, it's, it's very fair, yeah. yeah. I'm one of his posse. I, I'm, I, you know, he's got some strippers and, a, and some uh, rappers and me. He does not have know. strippers and rappers. I know, but so, no, I was here and I was standing back there and he introduced me and he said, hey, I, introduced, I put you on TV. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's my first time on TV. Thanks. <laughs> You've uh, been on TV before, though, have A couple times, you? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's Saget doing? You see him? Much? He's good. Yeah. He's, yeah. If we're really quiet, we can hear him complaining somewhere. Oh, in the, man, he never quits. He never stops. Never we we just went to Vegas. We actually went to Vegas to see Rickles. And it was uh, myself and, da and Bob and Dave Couillet from Full House 2. He played Joey. Right. And uh, they're good. We were in the airport. This is a true story. I don't know what's funny about it, but we were sitting in the airport. It's and... not a criteria for this show oh, really? to be yeah. funny, by the way. It's... We were going to establish that. Yeah. The, the, yeah. I saw your monologue. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. What's with the filthy pigeon? The... Dirty pigeon, the hoary pigeon. What do you got with the pigeon? No material, basically. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, it's it's great. Craig. Thank you. Thanks very much indeed. Um, now, uh, so we're in the airport, the three of us, right. with our cell phones, and this kid comes running up. He lost his cell phone. He says, "Can I borrow a cell phone?" He looks up, and it's the three of us from you know, full yeah, house, from yeah. TV and stuff. Yeah. And uh, you know, kind of. I told you, I, this story goes nowhere. Is that it? Yeah. Oh come on. Well, we all said yes, and then nobody gave up our phones. All right. You know, so to the guy. so and, it ended and, uh, well. But no, it'd be like it would be like you know, seeing the cast of you know, the, you know Growing Pains or something. And, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, who was the? the what did they? Uh... <laughs> Why do I come on this show? You know, I, I got, when I was here with Rickles, you came back and you were so nice. And you said, I'm hey. Thanks to you. No, you I'm nice, nice to you. No, you've yes. been great. Yeah. yeah. But you said, why don't you do the show? I said, yeah, sure. And then here I am stuck doing the show. Well, now, no. come on. That's no fair. No, no, that I'm ER big... show needs a little bit of help, doesn't it? No. We're, I know. We're, we're, we're blasting into it? Our, our 15th season. It's been it's Now, been are you, you're, yeah, I know. It's amazing. It's amazing. This is the second time Wait, there's a doctor, right? Let me ask you something. You're a drummer? You're a drummer, aren't I you? I was a drummer, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You still band. a drummer? You still drum? Yeah, I play with the Beach Boys still. The Beach Boys? No, I, I wasn't with the Beach Boys. No. Uh, this year, actually, is the 20th anniversary of Kokomo, believe it or not. So it's, wow. Uh, yeah, I know. That's, how did you end up drumming with the Beach Boys, of all things? I was a big fan. I used to hang out at the shows. I'm and a big finally... fan of you, too. They never asked me up on stage. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear you play. Can you do do a pair? Can you play a pair? Beach Boy stuff? No, not. Yeah, I can get by. That was. I don't mean to be mean, but no, 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 that was crappy. Can you play a paradiddle? You know. No, I can't play a paradiddle right now. I won't be put on the spot by you. Paradiddles are right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. No wonder you two wouldn't watch it. That's, that's a paradiddle. What about what about five eight? Do you ever do anything in five eight? It's tough. Yeah, it's very yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the Beach Boy stuff is not as. I mean, it's you know some of it's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What what one then? <laughs> <laughs> You're an no, ass. No, no, no. You're an ass. No, 
I'm not. Come on. No, no, no. no. Uh, I'm just. I wanted. I, I'm yeah. intrigued. How did you end up with the beach? I mean, you're a fan of the Beach Boys. I was a you're fan, on TV. You know, and I, I was hanging around. I was on television. They asked right. me to play. The first time I played with them was in D.C. in '85, right. and it was for a, a million people. They played at the Washington Monument for a million people. A million people. Yeah, it was, that was your first time. It was with the, them? One of, yeah, the first time. That's a kind of a baptism by fire. It was, yeah. And, bit, and yeah. I remember people were, cr cr you know, crushing up in front, and they said, "Could you go out and tell tell them to stop, you know, <laughs> stop pushing?" And I said, "No, I'm not going to tell. What am I? You know, say to a million people, stop. I'm the yeah, drummer, and me, I'm yeah. on TV, so get back." Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, are you having fun on the ER? You know? I love it. It's yeah. the best job I ever had. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, really. You know, yeah, really. Great. And you're having, you on the uh, on the ER. You are your character's having an affair with uh, Parminda, eh? No, now oh, no. I'm, I'm on to the next one. I'm on to uh, Linda Cardellini, who plays uh, Sam on the show. You are just living the dream. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for you. It's always good yeah. to see you, John. My pleasure. John Stavis, everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> You're welcome, people that enjoyed Ancien Andalou from the 1920s. Or so. is, it, is it the 1920s, that movie? I don't know. It can't be. I don't know. It sounds brainy anyway. <laughs> Dude, this is getting really too strange. <laughs> My next guest is a terrific writer. She's uh, written a series of books about a detective named Starletta Duval. Please welcome the lovely Judith Smith Levin, everybody. Judith Smith Levin. I'm okay. I think I got lipstick on you. Yeah, that's all right. No, that's actually mine. <laughs> I, uh... Now, listen, i got to talk to you about these books that you write. About, you know, because Scarletta Duval, who's uh, the character in this, she's, uh, she's a sassy, she's a sassy black cop. Go figure. Yeah, no, I was just... <laughs> and I, I was, I'm doing my Google work on you today, and I'm seeing that you were, in fact, a sassy black cop. <laughs> Is that true? You really were a cop? Is that how you started writing the books? Yeah, well, I was a cop first, but I've been a writer all my life, actually, right. since I was 13 years old. But I wanted to write about my experience on the job. And how did I, you end up going from being a writer to a cop? Why did they, how did they get, get well, you into that? Actually, I got, I got kind of tricked into it. I was working for the newspaper. This is in Worcester, Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts. Worcester. Worcester. The home of Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary? Yeah. Hey. I probably okay. arrested his family. Who knows? But <laughs> I, uh, I, was writing a, I was writing as a newspaper columnist for right. the Worcester Evening Gazette. And I noticed that that city, which was over 200 years old at that point, didn't have any black cops, didn't have any female cops. So I started writing all these little articles. And the next thing I know, I got called in by a captain who says, you don't like our city? I said, I don't have a problem. I just want to know where the black folks at. You right. <laughs> and so he said, well, there's a, an exam coming up for patrol officer. Take the exam. I said, I don't want to be a cop. So he said, shut up. <laughs> okay. So basically, this sounds like a romantic comedy. Actually, do you kind of like, do you kind of like, I don't like you at first, and then you get kind of turned on a little bit and everything. Nah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, I took the exam because they dared me. They said I dared you to do it, so I took the exam. And I came in with the fourth high score in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Hello, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. and I, thank you. I thought that was very interesting because the guy, when I went to take the exam, I was the only woman taking this exam. Right. And the guy actually came up to me and says, now you put your last name here and your first name here. You know, like, okay. Yeah, 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 really. And make sure that you, you spell your last name with a capital letter. You know, come on. And I popped up with that score. Is that, and is that how you get such high marks? <laughs> He took you through. I paid attention. I paid attention. <laughs> so, did you encounter now in the in the books? Uh, you know, Scarletta is kind of like she's a lieutenant. You were were you a lieutenant? No, I was a regular patrol officer. But I made right. star. I made her a lieutenant so she could be the boss. Uh -huh. But she's different. The lieutenants usually stay in the office and tell everybody else what to do. But right. she goes out on the street, which is what I like about her. And she right. gets involved with everything that happens with her squad because, as she says, how can I run my squad and know what's happening if I'm sitting on my brains all day? I got to be out where they are. And and, and how how long were you? 
uh, how long were you a cop? Almost seven years. Good lord. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's. Uh, did you run into a lot of racism and a lot of trouble? Because that, that happens in the books too, doesn't it? Uh, I got a lot of it from the guys I worked with when I first started. I was on a department that was mostly Italian and and Irish, and at the time that I went on, they actually had three other black cops who came. So there were four of us. Right. And uh, we used to see we could have our African American patrol meetings, meeting in the in the phone booth down at Kelly Square, but <laughs> it was it was interesting. It was interesting. But most of those guys, the first year, there were guys who were really good from the beginning who just accepted the fact that I was out there doing it. But once I was, you know, had my baptism by fire and rolled around the street with people, you know, got you hurt. earned their respect. I did. This is I a did. great movie. <laughs> and then the captain's like, oh, it's dark curses. That Judith, she's kind of winning me over with her <laughs> integrity and her sassy good looks. And what about the, uh, are you, are you from that town? You went from that I'm from town. Chicago. Chicago? Uh, what part of Chicago? South side. Oh, is that, is that uh, good or bad? Project girl. I was, I was born and raised on the south side of Chicago. I grew up in the projects in Robert Taylor Holmes. Right. I think, uh, Shy McBride is another one. Yeah, yeah, project. he's been here a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a lovely fella. Yeah. So it must be full of lovely people. Well, we're, uh, we're kind of cool in Chicago. Yeah, 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 that's fine. The, uh, the big sports fans over there as well in Chicago. Except You're me. You're not a sports fan no. at all? No. no. So you don't live in Chicago anymore, clearly. That's true. Uh, in every place I've ever lived, everybody's a big sports fan. But I have to say, I did go into basketball when Michael Jordan was playing, because I thought he was amazing. Oh, yeah, but then again, I also remember Dr. J. And so there was a whole lot of Dr. J. Do you know, th this, is, this is where you leave me behind. I only got here about 13 years ago. That's so right. I, I, you know, I'm kind of like, <laughs> I remember David Beckham coming for soccer and that's it. <laughs> and falling over and never playing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. He comes up for the soccer. I'm going to teach America how to play soccer. And then he went, <laughs> there's your $80 million. See you. Uh, so where do you live now? Actually, I live in Washington State. I live in Kirkland, Washington. And the only thing about Kirkland is that it's the home of Costco. <laughs> That's the Costco advertising CBS. Well, they, they do now. Uh, and I also, I live seven minutes away from Microsoft, so. That's the only oh, right. Thing. Could you talk to them about that Zoom crap they keep putting out there? Darling, I use a Mac. You, yeah, I, I, okay. I, I couldn't possibly endorse any particular product. Me too. Uh, <laughs> Judith, uh, listen, I can't recommend these books highly enough. They're, they're, really, they're really kind of from somebody who knows the world from the inside. It's a fascinating look at the world of, of a police officer uh, and, and, police, and police work. It's really lovely to spend some time with you. Judith Smith Levin, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, my even filthier pigeons. <laughs> I know it's lame, but hey, I'm lame. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what I do, damn it. I'm a lieutenant in the police force. You know, I, for once in my life, I'd like to be that guy. You know, like, have my tie a little bit undone and be kind of like, ah, I wasn't ready for this. I was many retired today. <laughs> ah, wait a minute. If that guy robbed the bank, then how could he have... Ah. <laughs> That's right. I want to be pirate detective. <laughs> ah. How could he possibly have raided that bank? Surely, no! Ha <laughs> ha! Pirate CSI. There's been a murder. <laughs> My next guest is here performing Greater Blue from her major label debut album, Autumn Fallen. Please welcome Jamie, everybody. Jamie! Are you 
too nervous to be lovers Friendships ruined with just one kiss I watched you very closely I saw you look away Your eyes are either gray or blue I'm never close enough to say But your sweatshirt says it all With the hood over your face I can't keep staring at your mouth Without wondering how it tastes And I am with another boy He's asleep, I'm wide awake He tried to win my heart But it's taken time And I know the shape of your hands I watch him when you talk I know the shape of your body I watch it when you walk From the start, and I've noticed she's your lover. She's nowhere near your heart. This city is for strangers, like the sky is for the stars. And I think it's very dangerous if we do not take what's ours. And I am winning you with words. I have no other way. I love to look into your face without your eyes turning away. Hey, last night I watched you sing. A person has to try. And I walked home in the rain. A person cannot That was fantastic. Really lovely. I, uh, I got to tell you, though, I'm beginning to feel it now, though. I'm getting a little tired. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. It's about that time we should really think about uh, getting out of here. I have to be honest with you. I, you know that time of day when you think... Save your applause until I get to my underpants. <laughs> we gotta get